Welcome everyone. We are going to be talking about naming and formula writing for covalent compounds. Um, so this is going to go in line with a larger decision tree um, or flow chart that we're going to be building throughout this unit. Um, this is going to be the covalent side. Um, so continuing with the last unit, the very first question that we'll need to ask ourselves once we get going and have a big mixed set to work with is whether or not it's ionic or covalent. For today, what I want you guys to focus on with covalent is this phrase, um, prefixes equals subscripts. Let me write that in a little bit better of a spot. Hold on one second. Just go ahead and go over here. So we'll use this space off to the side. So again, prefixes equals subscripts. So again, you should remember that subscripts are the little numbers um, at the bottom of the formulas. And the prefixes that we're going to be using are equal to the subscripts. So remember in covalent, we learned this in bonding, there is no crisscrossing, there are no charges. Nothing like that. We just go straight from the prefixes to the subscripts and straight from the subscripts to the prefixes. So it makes covalent pretty easy to work with. Um, there are 10 prefixes that we're going to be working with. Mono is the prefix for one. Di is the prefix for two. Tri is the prefix for three. Tetra is the prefix for four. Penta is the prefix for five. Hexa is the prefix for six. Hepta is the prefix for seven. Octa is eight. Nana is nine. And Deca is ten. So you want to make sure that you know those prefixes because that's going to help you translate between the formulas and the names for covalent compounds. So the very first thing that we're going to do when we're doing this, we're talking naming first. So this means that you'll be given a formula to work with first, and then you'll be asked to generate the name. So you're going to write the name of the first non-metal, and then you're going to write the name of the second non-metal, and we're always only going to use the ending IDE. So what I want you to remember throughout this unit is that the only ending that you are able to add is the ending IDE, and that's true for everything. That doesn't mean that everything has an IDE, and we'll talk about that a little bit later, but the only one that you are able to put on there is IDE. Next, you're going to insert the prefixes. Into your name to match the subscripts. In the formula. The last thing is there's one exception that we're going to be working with and that is that we never start a name so that would apply to the first name. We never start a name with mono. So what that means is that 1 through 10 is available for the second name on your compound, but 2 through 10 are available for the first name. Let me actually put that on the other side here. Two through 10 are available for the first name. The other way that I remember this is by using the phrase don't go one on one. Meaning we're not going to ever use the prefix for the number one on the first name. Don't go one on one. It's just a trick how I remember it. So help if that's helpful for you, then go for it. So we're going to come down here to our practice problem, and I'm going to kind of do steps one, two, and three all at the same time. I'm going to look at my 
subscripts to see what numbers I have. And then I'm going to think about what prefix does that generate. So I've got die for two, and I've got penta for five. So remember that we have the first name doesn't change anything about it other than adding the prefix as long as it's not one. So that means that I'm going to have di nitrogen penta sulfide because remember that I drop the ending and add ide. In B, we can see that we do have an assumed subscript of one there. And again, it's on the first name, so we know we're not going to use it. So we're just going to call this what it is, nitrogen. But then I do have a subscript on oxygen. That's going to correspond with the prefix di. And then oxygen is going to turn into oxide because I'm going to add that IDE ending. Going to the next one, we have the prefix of two on sulfur, so di sulfur. Again, we don't change the ending on the first name. And then I have another prefix of two on chlorine, so it's going to be di chloride. Again, I change the ending on the second name. Over here, we have two and four, and this brings up kind of a little bit of an ELA lesson embedded within our chemistry lesson, but we've got di nitrogen, and this would be tetraoxide, so the A and the O would back up to each other, so we just usually drop the A, and so it would be tetroxide, tetroxide, so we don't put the A and the O together. In E, sample E, we have another assumed one on the first name. So again, we don't go one on one, so we're just going to call it what it is and call it sulfur. And then hexa is going to be the prefix for six. And again, we run into this um, A, but since we don't have an O after it, we keep it. and it's hexafluoride. So on the previous one, the reason we dropped the A again was because it was butting right up to the O. Next, we have two and five. So we've got di-nitrogen. And then again, we're gonna run into an A and an O. So we're gonna drop the A, pent, whoops, excuse me, pentoxide. So the last example or set of examples that we need to think about are something called diatomic molecules. Di, we already know, means two. So two atoms. So molecules that are made of two atoms. And we have things like we talked about in the bonding unit where we had hydrogen that was H2 and we had um, hydrogen chloride, which was HCl, and we saw that they were both diatomic, but one of them was, and they were both linear, but one was polar and one wasn't. So we looked at it in terms of polarity last time, but this time we're going to look at it in terms of naming. So diatomic molecules are going to get names just like they are, as you see above, unless they're two of the same element. So diatomic molecules have to be bonded to something. So we're going to remember H, O, F, B, R, I, N, C, L. Okay, hydrogen, oxygen, fluorine, bromine, iodine, nitrogen, chlorine. And we call them the twins. So you need to remember the Hofbrinkle twins because they're always either bonded to another element or there are two of them. So they are twins. That's where the twins comes from.
So the special thing about these guys is that they actually, they have to be bonded with somebody. And absent of anybody else, in order to have a pure substance of each of these elements, they actually have to be bonded to themselves. So when we say hydrogen gas, there is no such thing as H by itself. Hydrogen gas is always going to take the form H2. Oxygen gas is always going to take the form O2, so on and so forth throughout all seven of these elements. The tricky part about naming them is that there are no prefixes. So in other words, H2 would just be hydrogen. O2 would just be oxygen. So on the Hofbrinkel twins, we don't do any of the first name, second name, or any of the prefixes. We recognize that they are pure substances, they are pure samples of that element, but on the molecular level, they take the form of that diatomic molecule in order to satisfy their octet. We're going to scroll down, so all of this is going to disappear in just one second. Pause if you need to and make sure you have everything down. But we're going to go ahead and scroll down, and we're going to look at some examples. So again, remember, prefixes equal subscripts. So above, we just did a bunch of examples going from the formula to the name. So again, we have an assumed one here and an assumed one here. We don't go one on one, so this is just going to be hydrogen. But remember, subscripts, or excuse me, prefixes 1 through 10 are valid on the second name. So this would be hydrogen monofluoride. Okay. Another one where that is true is number three, nitrogen, whoops, because we don't go one on one, but it would be monoxide, because prefixes one through ten are valid on the second name. So I just wanted to hit on those to throw a couple of other examples in there where you don't end up using the mono on the first name. Over here, though, we're going from the name, so starting with number 11, we're going from the name to the formula. So what we're going to be doing, because prefixes equal subscripts, we're going to be looking for the prefix to tell us what the subscript is going to be. So I know that my first element is nitrogen. It's the first name, and there's no prefix, which means that it has to be a subscript of 1. Now, triiodide, iodine would be my element. Tri means that there's three of them, so it would be Ni3 for your formula. Dinitrogen tetroxide means that nitrogen being my first element, there's going to be two of them. Oxygen being my second element, there's going to be four of them. So you're using the prefixes to indicate your subscript. Last one we'll look at here, sulfur does not have a prefix, which means that there is just one of them. And then trioxide would be O3. So what I want you guys to do is work with your groups or work um, individually if you wish, or if you're out of school right now and finish up the rest of these examples. Then we're going to take a break and come back with another activity.